In logic, we can use Euler's circles to represent categorical propositions. This comes from the mathematician Leonard Euler. He used two circles, one circle representing everything that belongs to the subject S and a second circle representing everything that belongs to the predicate P. Consider, let's take the universal affirmative proposition, all S or P. For example, all men are mortal. Men is the subject, mortal is the predicate. Each member of S belongs to P. So the circle S is in the circle P. We have men within the circle of mortality. Now consider the universal negative proposition, no S or P. For example, no elements are compounds. The subject is elements, the predicate is compounds. Elements, S, compound, P. There's mutual exclusivity. Each member of S does not belong to P, so the circles are entirely apart. We know their full distribution. Next, we have the particular affirmative proposition, some S or P. For example, some animals are mammals. Animals is the subject, mammals is the predicate. At least one member of S belongs to P. Notice the circles overlap. S appears in the common area. Some animals are contained within mammals. Finally, we have the negative particular proposition, some S are not P. For example, some books are not worth reading. Books is the subject. The predicate is worth reading. At least one member of S does not belong to P. Notice the circles overlap. S appears outside the common area. There is at least one book that is not worth reading. This is an introduction very briefly to Euler's circles, an important topic in logic. I'm the Amateur Logician from AmateurLogician.com.